This call may be recorded or transcribed.
แล้วแ
Good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is Susie. Has anyone joined the call? I would like to say good morning. Good morning. My name is Eva. My name Wonderful and blessed. Good morning. And who is that to just uh this is Sister Lisa? Good morning. God bless everyone on the call. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, Sister Lisa. God bless yeah. you as well. You have, you have a great day. day. You too. God bless you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Susie. It's Good Diane. morning. Good morning, Diane. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good. You have a great day. Thank you, you too. Thanks. Is anyone else joining the call that would like to say good morning? Good morning. Good morning, Monica. Oh, oh who is that? Good morning, this is Monica. Good morning, Monica. And I heard two yeah. other people. Can I put in a prayer request? Oh, okay. You said Monica? Yes. Yeah. Okay, what's your prayer request? Uh, For my sister in Christ, Tina. She's going in for surgery today. Okay, just a minute here. I'm writing it down. Sister in Christ, and what's your name again? Tina. Tina, going into surgery. Okay. I'm writing it down. Thank you. Okay, I got it. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. You as well. Good morning. This is PR, and may I also put in a prayer request? What is your name again? PR. How do you spell that? Cap the letter P and the letter R. Oh, okay. P is in Paul and R is in Ray. P is in public and R is in Ray. Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot of background noise. Can you please mute your line? Okay, PR. What's your uh, prayer request? For my mother Betty, mother she Betty. is she's eighty six years old, and she's coming out of COVID. Mother Betty, eighty six, and coming out of uh, COVID. COVID, yes, and okay. um, of the Lord ready. too. Okay, just yeah. one second. Mother Betty, Betty coming out of COVID, COVID, right? Yes. Okay, I've got and, it. Uh, Yes, um, she's lost the use of her legs, and she's going through a lot right now. I'm just praying for a supernatural intervention for the resurrection okay, power. Okay, so we will definitely uh, put her in our prayer request. I mean, put her in our prayers. Thank you so much. You're welcome, PR. Good morning, this is Shara. Good morning, Shara. Good morning. I need a prayer request as well, too. Oh, my goodness. Okay, just a minute here. <laughs> I'm sorry. This reminded okay. me that she said it's wrong. Okay, what okay, is Shara? Yes, I um, got Shara. What's your prayer request? My mother. Just pray for her Um, just mindset, renewing the mind, just thinking, okay. thinking. <laughs> okay, mindset. And that's your mother's, and she's... That's okay. my mother, yes. Okay, so Shara, her mother, and she has to fix her mindset, or how do you want me to say that? Renewing of the mind. That's better, okay. Romans 12, yeah. Renewing of the mind. Thank you. Okay, uh huh. Has anyone else joined the call that would like to say good morning? Good morning, it's Sister Tracy. Happy Thursday, everyone. Good morning, Sister Tracy. Same to you. Has anyone else joined the call? Good morning, it's Pretty Patrice. Good morning, yes. Pretty Patrice. Good to hear your voice. Good morning, Susie. Good <laughs> have to a, hear you as well. You have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Has anyone else joined the call that would like to say good morning? Good morning, Susie. It's Grateful Deborah Evans. Good morning, Grateful Deborah Evans. Good to hear your voice. You too, thank you. Good morning, Good morning. 
Pardon? Good morning, Miss Jamaica. I I couldn't understand you there. Sorry, I have a mask on. I'm at work. I said good morning, it's Jamaica. Oh, Jamaica. Okay, <laughs> good morning. Okay, you have a great day. Has anyone else joined the call that would like to say good morning? Good morning, Susie. It's Rochelle. Good morning, Rochelle. Good morning. So the, the young lady that um, I, one of the I hear, Wait a second. I hear like you're talking two times. Okay, here it go. Is it better? Okay. Yeah. Okay, the young lady that wanted us to pray for her mom, can you give us the scripture so we can be um so we can be in agreement with the same scripture? Uh, what scripture? She didn't give me a scripture. She, she is. She, give her one second. She, she, Romans she 12. Okay, two. Wait, wait a minute. Okay. It's got too many people talking at the same time. Hold on one second, Susie. It's Romans 12, 2. Now, where do you want me to put that? You, you don't have to put it anywhere. I just want to put it on my prayer notes. Oh, okay. Romans what? 12 and 2? Yes. I believe so. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And that's where your mother, who said, oh, gosh. I got it. So oh, I'm sorry. I'm my hearing too many you. people talking, so I'm, I can't get it all. Sure, your mother. I got it. I got it, Susie. Oh, okay. Thank you. So you'll go ahead and say it? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Has anybody else joined the call that would like to say good morning before I get started here? Okay. Well, it is time to get started with the call. But before we move forward, we ask that you mute your line so that we can proceed. And hello, my name is Susie, and I am your host. And thank you for joining us here on Declare Victory. We are a prayer call that meets Monday through Friday, starting at 6 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time, and 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time to edify, empower, encourage, and equip you in your walk with Christ. Please feel free to invite a friend so they can be blessed as well. Be sure to join us during the month of February, where our monthly theme is entitled... Can someone mute your line, please? Be sure to join us during the month of February, where our monthly theme is entitled Radical Obedience. All the declarations will focus on the importance of being radically obedient to the will and plan of God, which allows us to walk and live with purpose. There is one announcement today. Ladies, please join us tonight and every Thursday night for Walk It Out Woman's Call by Miss Lisa Porter. The call takes place from 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and right here by dialing the same number tonight. There were no prayer requests submitted on the app. But I do have three, one by Monica, asking that uh, that we pray for her sister in Christ, Tina, who's going into surgery. Then from PR, Mother Betty, 86, coming out of COVID, but she has loss of her legs. And then Shara, her mother's uh, set renewing of mind, if, her, if we can pray for them. Okay, the order of the call this morning is prayer and corporate praise will be brought by Diane. The declaration will be brought by Dion. Then we'll go right into the closing comments hosted by the declared Dion. The scripture for today is Deuteronomy 11 and 1. Love the Lord your God and keep his requirements, his decree, his laws, and his command, commands always. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. At this time, we ask that you put your phones on mute and tell instructed to come off mute. I now pass the call to the prayer warrior, Diane. God bless you all. Father, we just thank you for another day of your brand new mercies. Lord God, you are King of kings and Lord of lords. So, Father, you tell us to walk in obedience to the Lord. So, God, I thank you this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Deuteronomy 5.33 says, Walk in, in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that which he will give you. So, God, we give you praise this morning. We magnify your holy name, O oh God. We lift you high above the heavens, O oh God. For you sit high and look low. You hover over all of your creation. So, Father, we give you praise this morning. We give you thanks this morning, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, you said, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds then we will be able to test and approve what is good and perfect will. God, I thank you this morning. God, you says, let nothing move us, always giving account, Lord God, fully to the work of the Lord, that our labor is not in vain. God, we thank you this morning, Lord God. Let us do what thus says the Lord. God, you said that he who has an ear, let him hear what the Lord has to say. So God, let us let our ears be tended to that small, still voice that we may hear you, God, that we may walk in your, your precepts, oh God. So God, I thank you this morning for your loving kindness is better than life, Lord God. I thank you this morning, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. And God, we don't want to lead anybody astray because it falls on us. So God, in the name of Jesus, I just give you praise this morning. I thank you, Lord God. I lift up our children to you this morning, our grandchildren, oh God, those who are sick in their skin on their sick bed, those who have lost loved one. God, we lift them up to you this morning, Lord God. God, we ask that you comfort them, that you that you comfort their hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, I just thank you this morning that you are El Olam, the everlasting God. You are Jehovah Ra, the Lord, my shepherd. You are Adonai the Lord and master of my life, oh God, and the life of declare victory. God, I thank you this morning that you are Jehovah Shema, the Lord who is there. God, there is no place we can go from your presence, but you are everywhere, Lord God. You are our companion, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we, we thank you, Lord God, for your loving kindness is better than life. God, your presence is not limit. You are everywhere, God. Everywhere we go, God, you are there. So, Father, I just thank you this morning for the being for being the great I am, the one who is, the self-existent one. God, I thank you that you are the great I am. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are El 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 Yon, the God most high. You are the sovereign God whom we can trust, God. And I just thank you this morning, Lord God. I lift up Mona's friend this morning, Tina, who's going into surgery. God, you are the greatest doctor and the greatest surgeon there ever is, oh God. You have never lost a patient. So God, I thank you this morning, Lord God. And I lift up PR mother to you, Mother Betty, coming out of COVID, God. Continue to heal her, Lord God. And return the use of her legs. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you this morning, Lord God. And I lift up Char's mother, renewing the renewing of her mind, oh God, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we give you praise this morning, Lord God, as we bring worship unto you, oh God, like never before. If we can all take our phones off of mute and give God the highest praise ever, for he is King of King and Lord of Lord. God, you are great. You are great. You are great. Good good Father, oh God. God, you never, you never We can pray for you this morning, Lord God. We thank you for Dion, Lord God. And she brings forth the message. And God, we thank you for Dion and through her, God. 
Hey, Shell, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Uh-oh. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, God morning, great morning, and happy Thursday. I know that there has not been a time, I don't think, in years that I have shared three times consecutively. Look, uh, th- this may be specific because when, when God has something that he wants to get to you all, he always gives it to me first, yes? So there's a, a new dimension of of in, a new dimension of obedience, a new layer, a new level. And yesterday I shared, we talked a little bit about what trading floors were. And I said that we were going to go through some um, renunciations and um, some coming out of, agree- of agreement with. And right before I do that, somebody's phone needs to be muted for me. Somebody's driving perhaps. Can you find that for me, Shell? Amen. Um, nevertheless, um, right before we do, I think uh, a very familiar passage of Scripture, um, which is Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. We'll start there. Um, we we always talk about, um, or you hear it quoted quite frequently, uh, but more than anything, I think that we talk about the blessings. We don't necessarily touch on the curses, but when it comes to um, obedience, know this. It is, you can do this in exchange for that. So, um I don't know about you guys, but I even remember being uh, in position as a as a girl, as a kid. I recognized consequences really, really early. Um, and for some of us, and everybody has their own process into walking into, for real, submitting their lives to Christ. Um, it took me a while, y'all. And I, I knew... Uh, I'd consider the cost. I told you guys the other day, honey, I didn't I didn't fall into holes. I would literally walk into destinations and ha- take a seat <laughs> until I got for real, for real, tired of repeating systems and cycles. Um, the word obedience, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this probably several times, we remember that it means to hear, to hear and to understand. So it's one thing to hear. A totally different thing to hear and to apply and or understand what it is that God is saying. So let's go directly to this passage because it's a lot of reading. Amen. And so again, we're at uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. And it shall come to pass that if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all of his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city. This is the the passage we hear all the time. Blessed shalt thou be in the fields, and blessed shall thou be shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thine kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in and when thou goest out. Hold on one second, let me come out of this. King Jimmy. All right. Um, in the city, blessed in the country, uh, God's blessing on your children, uh, the crops of your land, the young of your livestock, the cows of your herds, the lambs of your flocks, God's blessing on your basket and your bread bowl, God's blessing on your coming in and your going out. Uh, God will defeat your enemies who attack you. 
They'll come at you on one road, and they'll flee on seven. God will order a blessing on your barns and your workplace. He'll bless you in the land that God, your God, is giving you. God will form you as a people holy to him, just as he promised you. If you keep the commandments of God, your God, and live the way he has shown you to. And the people on earth will see you living under the name of God and hold you in respectful awe. God will lavish you with good things, children from your womb, offspring from your animals and your crops, your land, and the land that God promised your ancestors that he would give you. God will throw open the doors of his sky box and pour rain on your land, on your scheduled blessings, the work of your hands. God will lend to many nations. Uh, you will lend to many nations. I'm sorry. Um, and you won't have to take out loans. God will make you to heed, not make you the head and not the tail. Um, you'll always be top dog, never the bottom. As you obediently listen to and diligently keep the commandments of God, your God, that I'm commanding you today. Uh, but swerve an inch to the right or to the left from God's word that he commands you today by going off, following, and worshiping other gods. Now, I'm going to stop right there. That That's a... Uh, that is um, Deuteronomy 28, that was 1 through uh, 14, right? So so those are the blessings, and you see then there's uh, an, an exit clause at 14. It says, but <laughs> if you swerve an inch to the left or to the right with serving other gods, then at 15, it starts out by saying, here's what will happen if you don't obediently listen. Now, here's, this is the thing, I think, one of the things we always hear about the blessings of the Lord. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the fields. Blessed shall you be in your coming and in your going. We hear that. I know I've heard that probably my whole entire life. But everybody stops at 15. Now, I'm going to read a little bit, but the reality is that the curses <laughs> is an extended list, a list far greater uh, than the blessings of the Lord, right? We know that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and addeth no sorrow. That's Proverbs. I wish I, I, wish I was Jackie right now. Um, nevertheless, in many instances, we, concerning even trying to start walking in faith, uh, if you grew up any type of way in a, a real religious or traditional uh, church setting, there were certain things that you understood. But for me, I felt like God was an ogre. I felt like he was a boogeyman, and I didn't realize that there was relationship. I just thought that if I didn't do what he said, he was going to kill me, beat me down. I'm giving you this preface before I read some of the curses because the, the passage is extremely extended, but I want you to read them. Uh, it goes right hand in hand with coming out of agreement with and renunciations and disavowing and really understanding um, that, that there are some things that are iniquitous in us, and we're still talking about obedience. Um, there are some things that, that you will be faced with certain challenges concerning your bloodline, concerning, um, you know, just maybe how you were brought up or taught. There are lots of things that we will have to unlearn in an effort to obey God fully, especially if you were taught wrong. And I believe that um, in most instances, some of the things that we were taught don't serve us concerning relationship. They were great for religion. They were great for tradition. But when it comes to obeying God, or um, thank you so much, Sheila, that, that uh, the blessings of the Lord make us rich and addeth no sorrows. Proverbs, I knew it was Proverbs 10 and 22. 
um, under whatever circumstance, we all have to get to a place where religion just is not enough. And and when you start to, for real, um, obey God, right, when you start to honestly build relationship with him, it is when you hear him. That that whole, the hearing thing is the key um, to growing and to becoming. The hearing thing is um, most important when it comes to uh, walking in a life of obedience, wherein um, last night, I, I'll give you a, a, or I won't even say last night, three, four o'clock this morning, um, I was about to send my tithe a certain place. Um, and the Holy Spirit stopped me in the middle of <laughs> what I was doing and said, no, I want you to send it here. Um, to, to even be able to establish it there, and I promise I'll make all this go together, uh, you have to have a relationship. Like re- religion won't teach you how to hear the voice of God. Uh, re- religion and and fearfulness and not really understanding where you stand in a place of obedience or in a place of honor and reverence, a place of um, where you really understand that he is Abba, that he is Father, that he is a uh, friend, that he is, uh, even in his sovereignty, he's a compassionate God. He's a merciful God and his love far outweighs um, his desire uh, to, to establish things in wrath, keeping in mind that anything Deuteronomy, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and, and some of the readings, especially if you are new to the faith, it can be a little intimidating. It can be quite scary if you don't understand that anything Old Testament is pre-grace, pre-Jesus Christ, is pre um making a, an active decision. Everything in Old Testament is all law. So we, we tie law to understanding that it is based on um, the traditions. And I'm not saying that the Old Testament is irrelevant. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. But what I will say is you need to distinguish um, the difference where things are established um, and they are established and run by man or mammon. They are established and run by um, legislate. That they are run by government. There, there's a, a specific order to all of this. Nevertheless, in the Deuteronomy chapter 28, starting at 15, and I'm going to give you a few of them, and some of them um, may make you uncomfortable. They may make you cringe, but I promise I'll make it all make sense. And here's what will happen if you don't um, obediently listen to the voice of the Lord, your God, and diligently keep all of the commandments and the guidelines that I'm commanding you today. All these curses will come down hard on you. God's curse in the city and his curse in the country. His curse on your basket and your bread bowl. God's curse on your children, your crops, and your land, the young and your livestock, the calves and your herds, the lambs and your flocks. God curse in your coming uh, and in your going. God will send the curse, the confusion, the constraints down on everything you try to do until you destroy, till you are destroyed and there's nothing left of you all because of your evil pursuit that lead to you abandoning me. And that's him saying, me, God. God will infect you with disease, wiping you right off the land that you're going to possess. God will set consumption and fever and rash and seizures and dehydration and blight and jaundice on you. (laughs) They'll hunt you down until they kill you this sky over your head will become an iron roof and the ground under your feet a slab of concrete. From out of the skies, God will rain ash and dust down on you until you suffocate. (laughs) Right? God will defeat you by enemy attack. You'll come on your enemies on one road and you'll run out seven. I'm going to stop right there for a moment. Uh, I think this doesn't end until 68, so clearly I'm not going to read until 68. 
But what I do want you to do uh, in your own personal time of study today, this is where we get a lot of, quote, unquote, our uh, bloodline curses, those iniquitous things. It, it is uh, a lot positioned in this particular passage of Scripture um, that talks about historical sins, some of the things that our forefathers do. So no different than the blessings, which are just 14 short verses long. Then we start from 14 all the way down to 68 worth of curses. Now, again, keeping in mind, this is Old Testament, it does not negate the truth that obedience means to hear God. It was him uh, going through the extra measure of understanding, listen, I, I would prefer you just obey me. I would prefer you just have relationship with me. I would prefer that you just hear me and do what it is that I'm calling you to do. I would like for everything that you do to prosper. I would love it if you recognize that I am the sovereign God. I, I'm your a present help in troubled times, but outside of all of that, I want to give you all these things specifically. However, I need you to understand it will be far worse on the opposing side of this sovereign God that was uh, sent to give us refuge and hope in life. I, I believe uh, if we look at even a passage of scripture um, concerning Abraham, Abraham was given direct and specific, succinct instruction. Uh, listen, take take your wife and go do X, Y, Z, right? The Bible says, and straightway. Um, you guys will hear me say that all the time. There, there are moments where you know you hear the voice of God. He'll tell you to do something specific when you're in relationship with him. Uh, for those that are still trying to glean the sound of his voice, the word declares, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Um, he had an immediate response, an immediate heart posture. Whatever it was that God said, as unfamiliar as it was, he recognized his voice. This is the hour um, where the difference between the blessing and the curse is going to be pending relationship, not pending religion. This is that, that moment, that time and that season where you have to recognize, um, and, and for some of us, we have been through life without uh, really being trained to hear the voice of God, without really understanding that absolutely there are consequences for our actions. Um, but for those things that we are unaware of, there is more grace. Amen. I, I don't know about y'all, but especially after reading something like Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, in its entirety, um, there there is a part of who I am that says I thank God for, number one, grace, but moreover, I thank him for being released and freed from religion and tradition and being able to recognize um, things in my bloodline, being able to recognize unconfessed, unrepented sin, being able to recognize um, where I knew I blew it, uh, being able to hear when there were moments that I didn't know that I blew it, that Holy Spirit had to unveil to me in moments of prayer, praise, and or worship. Um, if, if we know nothing else, again, God, God would prefer that we win. Beloved, I, I would that all would be saved, right? It, it, it's his desire for all of us to understand and know that his love for us is vicious, is adamant, is vehement. Um, and, and Adam, had he not, I mean Adam, and Abraham, had he not honored God with his life, can you imagine where we would be considering he is the, the forefather of uh, generations, of nations, he and Sarah, if he had stayed uh, with his family and his kindred, and for some of us, um, and me in particular, you guys have heard bits and pieces of my story, I remember when the Lord told me to move to Atlanta, I did not understand. I had no clue what was going on and I was trying to put it off and put it off, but I spent enough time in God's presence that I knew what he was saying. I, I knew that I was hearing his voice. I knew uh, that there were things that I understood differently than I had in times past when it was just religion and not relationship. 
Um, I, I knew the moment that I had to quit the job uh, that God had so kindly provided. I mean, and my job was lucrative. I enjoyed it. I liked it. I had fun there. You hear me? And I, I remember sitting there, and you guys heard me tell just a little piece of this story. Um, I remember sitting at my desk when I recognized that that what I was doing and, and the money that I was making, I could no longer make um, because it went against what I believed and, and how I chose to operate. It was not a place of integrity. I couldn't operate from there. It was the hardest thing. It, it was difficult. It was just as hard as moving to Atlanta. And I remember sitting at my desk crying um, because I knew that I had to do something different. Than, than what I had been doing. Can you imagine, and, and I'll say this, because it was Atlanta that prepared me for Declare Victory. I used to pray every morning at 6 o'clock with a group called First Fruits, and I did that for the entire five years that I was there. And before that, I was at True Line praying every day at 6 o'clock. I didn't, I didn't understand that there were things that I had to get off of me, that Holy Spirit had to show me, but I couldn't do it from my religious place. I couldn't do it from my place of disobedience. In California, I thought I was something. I thought I was somebody, honey. I thought I was running some things. He took me 3,000 miles away from everything that was familiar, everything that was common, so that he could begin to show me myself. I lived in that basement apartment. Before that, I slept on those air mattresses, and he just began to crack open um, really the, the gully of my heart and show me every dark and black and empty place that I had filled it up with my own personal God, lowercase g, where I had put things before him and put things uh, above what he planned for me because I had agendas and objectives. It was where he taught me to hear him very differently because I didn't have all these other people telling me I already had it all together. I already had it all figured out and I couldn't do it from where I was. I, I couldn't be close enough to be able to run right back home because, you know, we, we do that when we're uncomfortable. We go back to something that's stable. Imagine if Abraham had gone back to, uh, what God told him to leave, where would we be um, as a body of believers? Where would we be concerning the faith? Where would we be relating to the truth of God's word for our own individual lives? It was there in Atlanta that I, I discovered that, um, number one, I had been whoring after other gods. I, I didn't know that that's what it was, but money, that's a whole nother God. Uh, the affirmation and approval of people. That's a whole nother God. I was a attention whore of sorts. I was hecka materialistic and stuck in my own ideas and my own identity. It's no different than as Abraham traveled and, and walked. He found out he was a liar. Right, that's in relationship when you're out there, when when God takes you out of the places of comfort and He puts you in situations where you got to make your own way, you got to figure it out yourself. Here, Abraham lies and says that uh, Sarah is his sister, um, and and brings wreaks havoc and hell on others, brings curses on them that they didn't ask for because they didn't know that the woman was his wife and not his sister. Right, so. Again, we're talking about obedience, which means to hear. You have to get to a place, and, and I believe that everybody who, who wouldn't want to live a prosperous life, who wouldn't want everything that they touch to turn to gold, who wouldn't want uh, the people to be blessed as a direct result or reflection uh, of, of God demonstrating his favor, who wouldn't want uh, to experience uh, and access all that God has already written of them. Is there anybody here, anybody on the line that if you were uh, to, to just be honest, if you could figure all this stuff out and just do what God said the first time, this is a serious question, would you? Right? You know how we are in position, in places, and doing this, that, and the third, you know, just kind of random and uh, guesswork and, uh, you know, just kind of really trying to figure it out by the seat of our pants. And that's, that's kind of what it feels like 
until you get to a place where, for real, God's voice is so clear and succinct and so sure and so certain. Uh, the more you yield your will to his, the more you take time to, for real, push your plate back and fast and kill this flesh, and it's not easy, and it's not fun, and I don't like doing it. But let me tell you what I absolutely don't like doing. I don't like sleeping on air mattresses. I don't like sleeping in a basement apartment. I don't like cars breaking down randomly. I Listen, I don't like all the consequences that I've had to deal with. I don't like uh, sick kids. I don't like addiction. I don't like, listen, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of stuff that goes with historical disobedience, and then your own consequential um, obligation as a believer. And again, by the time this month is over, chances are there will be some conviction. If it's not, or you will stop calling or whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me, but it does. It's, it's my life. It's what I was created to do. I was created to get you to a place for real of repentance. Um, and, and all that means is to turn around and get you to a place where for real, God wants to get some things in your hand. And so now when I look at eight years later, here we are at uh, six, what time is it? 6.47 a.m. on this Thursday morning where I've had to share three days in a row consecutively, which was absolutely not my plan. <laughs> However, there's a, a level of obedience that you get to. Listen, I can't go do that. I got to go do this and prepare for the morning. I can't, I can't go over there. I, I got to do this because if I do this, then that'll happen. I had no idea that five years in Atlanta – um, unlearning stuff and going deeper in being able to hear God and obey him differently would change the trajectory of my life. I had no clue. I told y'all I just thought I was going to be a little hairdresser all my life. That was my only little hope and goal because I was making all the money and all of the stuff. And now if you mention hair to me, I want to uh, throw up in my mouth a little bit. I don't want to do that. So, uh, <laughs> All of that to say, is there are things that God is trying to put in your hand that from from doing that for five years to uh, then going through another, a deeper level, a deeper layer of, for real, brokenness, brokenness to heal all those systems and defense mechanisms, all those mechanics that I had created to protect myself and to uh, keep myself safe, to regardless of whether or not we know it, there are things that we lift above what we say we believe far more than we acknowledge on a day-to-day -day basis. There are things about who we are that God wants to strip. Uh, and it was a time I couldn't sit with myself. I couldn't be still. I couldn't just uh, stay in the house. If you don't remind me sometimes now, I will stay in the house for days and days and days, literally. Um, sometimes having to uh, remind myself to go outside. Now, I've been released. I could kind of go outside some now. But let me tell you a little secret. He will get me together so quick and say, but he don't have to say it loud now, see. When you get drugged a little bit. You see some uh, slab of cement under your feet as opposed to productive ground. <laughs> you will see. Right there are certain things he doesn't have to say to me twice, but also uh, that I can hear. I can hear. You, you, you be sat down by God. You be put in a place of for real protection. It wasn't isolation. Uh, I felt like it at first, and I fought it tooth and nail. But as soon as you release your idea, your plan of what you have in mind, and you give God permission to show you you in all of the gullies and the corridors and the dark places of your heart, the things you think you're hiding. When I started asking God hard questions, he started giving me hard responses, and all I could do was respect the process because I knew it was necessary uh, to get from there to here. And listen, check the move. I didn't do everything right every time. And and listen, and sometimes I still miss it. It is an ongoing um, journey. It's an ongoing series of repetitious learning to hear him 
and obey the first time. Right? It's not it's not something that you just snap into overnight. And I don't believe that that's the point. We are not perfect. We just have the perfect pattern to model after. Right? It is our choice. It is it is of our own, right? Mind, will, emotions. It is our responsibility to submit our ways unto the Lord. To commit our ways to the Lord, to surrender our ways to the Lord. That's all obedience is. It is hearing him and submitting to him. That S word, that's a hard one for most people, not just myself, right? And so long story short, they're, they're, even even in dealing with Abraham, Abraham, uh, no different than uh, a, a David or a Joseph or uh, a Mary or a Martha, we all at some point come to ourselves and have those moments of revelation and understanding where, where we get where we are. We get what our errors are. I, I know what my uh, soft spots are. I know the areas of concern for me. Right, I always have to be mindful of money. Right, just that that I I never ever allow it to pull me in any direction. That was my thing. I always have to be mindful of six six, uh, two hundred and seventy five pounds, uh, driving something nice with a great job, and I got to be mindful. I I, I got to be mindful. Uh, I, I have to be mindful for real of uh. Not not letting myself get angry enough to become physical. I was a fighter, y'all, right? So um, I, I have to, there are certain things that we all know what we have to do. Like, you ain't got to worry about me stealing ever. Huh? That's not what I'm going to do. You ain't got to worry about me telling no bunch of lies because that's just not what I do. You ain't got to worry about me uh, being abusive to no elderly person. That's not what I do. However, <laughs> That which I did do and had down to a science, those were the things um, and are the things that still, uh, you know, for somebody it may be using narcotics, for somebody else it may be alcohol, or another person it may be promiscuity, and somebody else it may be uh, you, you a whole entire liar. Uh, for somebody else, you you may have uh, an issue with being vindictive and venomous. You may want to get everybody back all the time. You know, but what happens is the more you learn how to obey his voice, but more than learning how to obey it, first you got to know what it sounds like. If you don't know what it sounds like, you will never be able to obey him. Right? And that being said, when you start to hear his voice and you spend active, consistent time in studying the word of God, meditating on the word of God, spending time in worship, he will begin to show you the things in your heart uh, that make you go bump in the night, the things that he is trying to relieve you of, right? Because all all he want to do is give us this freedom wherewith we are saved. All he wants to do is hand us what already belongs to us, all he wants us to do is have the heart posture to be positioned to steward what he already planned for us in life, that we'll be lenders and not borrowers. Like, you you see how, how cut and dry the blessing is, but how vast and broad the curse is, and I did not read them all, uh, but I, I want you to. Right? It talks about the 40-generation curse, the generation that some of us are sitting in until you understand what that is. Um, And I didn't read it on purpose. Right? There are things that we are being held responsible for that our great-great-grandparents did for some of us. Right? I know in, in my bloodline, in my family, um, one of one of I think the not taking care of our body thing uh, was nicotine, right? That's that's bloodline stuff. That's hand me down stuff. Alcoholism, as I 
look at my son, right? So certain things I have to call out, certain things you have to address, not just for you, but for your children and your children's children. I look at my, my middle son who chases money all the time. Man, when I was pregnant with him, I was getting it. This way, that way, left way, right way, wrong way, upside down way. And and you see it. If you, you look at your children, you will start to see some of the Deuteronomy 28 in your life, for real. So, so what does that mean, Dion? It means that you need to take some time for real in worship. And, and it, it may be unfamiliar terrain. It may be uncomfortable. It may frustrate you a little bit. But I guarantee you, if you spend some time in worship, the key thing is learning how to obey God, again, means learning how to hear him and to submit to his will for your life. What that looks like is literally separating yourself from people. Turn off your phone. Get off social media. Sit in his presence. Dion, I don't know how to do that. I'm telling you, you can create an atmosphere. and y'all, Somebody can write this down. Put up, Turn on you some soaking music. Just, man, listen to all these. Tell Alexa to play Christian soaking music. Just nice, quiet, still, peaceful music that, that has, um, an anointing. People usually that play soap music, you can't just do that if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, really. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, I don't think so. Um, but take some time and just sit in the presence of God and ask him questions. God, I, I don't know where to go from here. I don't, I don't know where I'm broken at. I don't know uh, what my ancestors did. I don't know. I don't know how to start all over again. I don't know how to hear you. I I don't recognize your voice and sit there until you feel his presence. I mean, like literally. And I don't mean just reading a whole bunch of scripture because then that's you, uh, you know, just doing what you want to do. I mean, just sit there and shut up. Sit there and find yourself in quiet space and quiet time and, and literally just meditate on the fact that, number one, he's faithful. And that his love is so great that here we are on the third day of the second month of 2022 and God thought enough of you uh, to give you a preview of the fact that, number one, his love for you is vicious, is vehement, is adamant. You know how I know? Because you're still here, which means you got action and getting this thing called life right. Uh, you may have woke up and um, popped you a, a Percocet this morning or a, a van, a bar, uh, uh, whatever. You may have uh, smoked you a blunt right before you got on the call. Child, check this out. That's so irrelevant. <laughs> you might have just got up out of somebody's bed you didn't have no business in. Child, he don't care about none of that. You still here. You got action. Right? <laughs> You you may have uh, stolen some money from your job. You might be an embezzler. Child, listen, can I tell you a secret? Now, that's ghetto, but he don't care about none of that. What he cares about is your soul, and what he cares about is getting the blessing to the generations after you, and you benefit while you're here. Why not? And if all it would require is you spending some time in his presence to find out the things that keep you from obeying him straightway, obeying him immediately. I remember when he told me to move to Atlanta, I wasn't in the place spiritually that I should be. I I thought I was. I thought I had strong roots in relationship, but I was still broken and tattered. There were things that I had not apologized, confessed, and repented for. What's in your basket that you need? Uh, to get out. What what are things, even as I'm speaking right now, just while we've been on the call, some things that have invaded your mind that you know uh, may have happened 10 years ago, may have happened uh, 15 years ago. You may still be holding somebody hostage to something they did to you. You may still be uh, dealing with unforgiveness and unrepented things. Uh, you may have done something to somebody and you got the nerve to be mad at them, right? There may be somebody you hold hostage. Do you see their face while I'm talking? That's what it looks like to hear God. For some people, it happens in pictures. For some people, it happens in phrases. For some people, you will say, okay, God, if I'm supposed to do X, Y, Z, then I guess I'll run into them somewhere. <laughs> and you get to the next location you go in, and that person you're supposed to apologize to is standing there. 
But God, I didn't do nothing to them. They did something to me. That don't have nothing to do with what humility costs. Apologize. You'll start hearing God tell you to repent to people who did you dirty. You'll start hearing God tell you that it's your responsibility to apologize to somebody that lied on you, that scandalized your name. (laughs) It's like, really, Jesus? It'd be like, yeah, it'll be good for your heart. Kidding me? Right? So so there are layers and levels to this. Um, And I promise if you start the work, if you begin the process of releasing some things, um, of of being absolved of some things, of getting some forgiveness and finding a place of repentance that really covers some of the things that will uh, plague you if you do not. You ever kind of wondered why, man, I, I just can't get it together. I just can't get a foothold. I just can't get over this. I just can't get past that. I mean, like there's this silt, like there's this backup, like you, you're trying to move forward, but there's something blocking you. Like you, I almost came out this time. I almost won. I almost overcame that. But then there's this thing. I'm telling you that thing is hinged in obedience. That obedience is hinged in submission, surrender, and worship. That uh, submission, surrender, and worship is hinged on you the, making the sacrifice to spend time in God's presence in such a way that you aren't always doing all the talking. That sometimes all you're doing is listening. If thou would hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God this day, then, right? So that being said, I hope I said something that encouraged inspired, empowered, but more than anything, that that will provoke you um, to getting to a place of really wanting to hear from God and not settling for religion, because religion is bunk, y'all. Relationship is everything. Religion doesn't help anybody accomplish anything. Relationship is what transitions us from glory to glory to glory. Y'all can have y'all religion. Y'all can have y'all tradition. This season is about relationship. Amen. I heard somebody about to say something. Amen. This is a time we have set aside for anyone that wants to, uh, that did not get a chance to say good morning earlier to do so. Good morning, all. Good morning. morning. This is Emma. Thank you for the word. Good morning. My pleasure. Good morning. I heard you jubilant, I believe, too. Yes, she did. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Hey, Anybody hey good morning. morning. Go ahead, Arby. <laughs> good morning, Mona. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. The decoration did touch because I think something is missing in mine, and you just feel the Lord. I just got to get back on my track. You have a blessed day. I enjoyed you. Amen. Good morning, we God. Love you, bless you, and thank you, ma'am. I appreciate you. Hey, good morning, sir. This is Boxy. Of course, all I can say to you right now is you understood the assignment. You, <laughs> you understood the assignment. Thank you. <laughs> what is that? Amen. Somebody needs to uh, mute their phone, I believe. Anybody else want to say good morning? Good morning. Good morning. Brother Mike. <laughs> Let's let our gentleman speak. Go ahead. Who is that? Hello. It was still. Good morning. Hey, Sunita. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, man. Anybody else? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Good morning, y'all. I heard I heard five folks. I think. <laughs> hey, Deanna, Christina, love you. Thank you for your obedience. Hey, man, love Amen. you too. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning Krishanda. Oh, on the hey, Potter's Krishanda. wheel. <laughs> As are we all. Good morning. Amen. Bless the word this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Who's that? 
This is PR. Um, do hey, PR. Give, give me just a second. Let's get through our good morning, and then we'll go into love, life, and victory. I'll call you first, okay? Amen. A- anybody else have a, a quick good morning? Anybody good morning, everyone. This is Leisha. Hey, Leisha. Good morning, darling. Good morning. Great morning. God morning, family. Good morning. Hey, magnificent. Good morning. This is Mary. Hey, Mary. Good morning. Good morning. It's below the bar. You're bringing the fire. It's getting deep in here. Hey, Amen. Good morning, beloved. Good morning. Thank you for the food. Amen, Ms. Barbara. Good morning. Anybody else? Anybody, anybody before we move forward? Good morning, Dion. It's me, Mary. Hey, me, Mary. Good morning. <laughs> Anybody else? Where are our gentlemen at? Amen. Well, God be praised. Um, We'll go ahead and go into the love, life, and victory discussion. Mr. PR, you want to go ahead? I was just going to share that um, Deuteronomy chapter 28 has always been a very um, favorite passage of scripture to me and um, the obedience. I just believe that we're at a time where God does not just speak to be heard. He speaks to be obeyed. And I'm very grateful to be on the line and to receive the declared victory message this morning. An honor and a privilege to be amongst you. Thank you. Amen. It's an honor and a privilege to have you here with us. Sis. Thank you so much for sharing your sound. Yes. Hey, Ray, we appreciate you. Hey, Anybody man, good else? Morning, God, morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Great morning. Great morning. Uh, listen, listen. Uh, I'm usually out the door. I'm usually at work right now, but I'm just now putting some grease in my hair and got stuck in the decoration because uh, I'm usually <laughs> at work. Great. Uh, I, I just sat up and twiddled my toes and stop getting dressed and everything else because I'm, I'm supposed to be there. <laughs> Having said that, uh, obedience and the spirit of conviction when you got a relationship with God is really, really is really wonderful uh, because you have, uh, it's amazing when your friends and people that you know can be a blessing to you. So you've been a blessing to me today and there's uh, a very dear friend that you and I know um, that uh, she dismissed me out of her life uh, over a misunderstanding. And I have the power uh, to reconcile that. I have the power to be obedient. And the spirit has just been tapping on my shoulder, staring at me. You know how you look around the corner, kind of look at somebody, you feel the eyes burning. I even felt the Mm -hmm. eyes of the Holy Spirit burning the back of my neck. Like, Mm -hmm. okay. And so today uh, was my green light to go and get everything, make it right at all costs, and Mm -hmm. stop being disobedient. I could justify it in my head but I couldn't justify Mm -hmm. it in my heart. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so what's powerful is uh, I'm going to make sure that happens. Uh, Like when Ephesians say, uh, don't let the sun go down on your wrath, because I'm I'm not mad. I'm not upset or anything like that. But uh, Mm -hmm. the the obedience piece when God is speaking. So you are a blessing today. Uh, You didn't reach nobody else. But as my dad would say, there's only one you reached me today. So bless you. Mm -hmm. That's that's a, that's a huge huge deal, and I get it, and I I get it. I totally totally get it. Yeah, I do. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Good morning, Hi, Good morning, thanks. This is Sister Lucia. And hey, um, hey, you know, I was just thinking you were talking about uh being obedient and, you know, being in God's will. And for me, I can be in God's will and be obedient and still all hell be breaking loose. 
So I have to just trust that God is working something out because I um, went to church Sunday, had an awesome time in God's spirit. You know, his spirit was just flowing. And I just was like, oh, this is beautiful. And it seemed like ever since I stepped out of church, all hell would break loose. And I'm like, well, God, what's going on? And he just keeps telling me, trust me, trust me. You know, I got a teenage daughter and, you know, her mouth is this and her mouth is that. And it's like, oh, wow, God. He's like, just trust me. Her dad, he did the fool last night. And I'm like, wow, God. And he just keeps saying, trust him. So I just wanted to get on here and just talk about I appreciated your declaration. But I know for me, sometimes I can be in God's will and still be going through a tough time. You know, and sometimes it's not always peaches and cream, you know. So I'm just grateful, and I just needed to share that. Thank you. Very good, and I get it. And, yeah, honey, I was right in the middle of God's will and just as thrown off and lost and confused, and I didn't know what was going on. And I'm thinking to myself, what now, uh, what? What just happened now? And how do how do I get out of this, <laughs> Jesus? Uh, there there wasn't there wasn't the only way in certain instances um, get out is to go through, right? So mm. so you you get to a certain point where you understand there are no shortcuts to obedience. Period. Right. There, there are no, there are no shortcuts to obedience. Just when you you obey and just obey. There's, there's nothing, nothing more, nothing fancy. It just, you just got to do what he says. And sometimes doing what he says not only is uncomfortable, um, but it feels extremely unfair. You know, especially when somebody did you dirty. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is that which has happened to me on so many occasions, I, I'd rather not talk about it much. But, and he'll tell me to go apologize. I was like, me, I, what I'm apologizing for? I didn't, I didn't do nothing to them. They did me like 17 dogs. That ain't fair, Jesus. And he'd be like, honey, this is not about fair. This is about humility. This is about your heart being properly postured. This is about surrender. This is about submitting your will to mine. Do you want me or do you want to feel good? What you what you want? Mm. That's deep. Well, just, it's just real. Do you want me or do you want to feel good? <laughs> uh Hear me, uh, right? Why would you ask me that like that? Jesus, that's dirty. I remember the first time DeMaria got really sick um, before I accepted that he might just need medication consistently. And I remember him laying in the hospital, and I was fit to be tired. Do you hear me? I was done. I was sick. My nerves was bad. I was screaming and hollering and sliding all down the wall and all this stuff. <laughs> I mean, I was having a hard way to go. And the Holy Spirit said, do you trust me? And I'm looking at my baby, he's sick as a dog. Well, listen, I don't know right now. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel um, about this thing that I absolutely positively cannot control. I don't know, Jesus, if I trust you, you asking the wrong person, the wrong thing at the right time. Cause I don't know. I don't know if I believe you just yet, you know, and I, I'd been in for a while. It wasn't new. Wasn't fresh. I had been on the battlefield. I had been living kingdom. But see, religion will, will have you thinking that you got it all figured out when in actuality you just as lost and stuck and stupid and uh, shame and molded and all the rest of the stuff as, as the rest of the people that you think you evangelizing. You be stuck. Right? But at the end of the day, go ahead. No, I'm saying because you're right, because it's definitely God's will and not our will. And, you know, I hear that all the time, but as I'm getting older, I'm starting to understand that I, I really know what I'm doing. That's why God tells us to trust him. He said his uh, word is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our pathway so that we can 
we in the dark. And the only way we going to make it is just to follow him and trust him because we don't really know what's going to happen day to day. And I'm That's like, God, I'm, you know, but I'm grateful for the platform. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Anybody else have anything? Hey, Dion. Um, this is Christine. Just to piggyback about what y'all are talking about. When when you realize um, it was God's will for for Jesus to take the cup, mm-hmm. right? Um, mm-hmm. He said. He said. And he said, if it is possible that this cup pass for me, but yet not I, my will, but your will. And in Mm -hmm. him being, and in his suffering, we, because it says in Hebrews, what, five and seven, that in the days of his flesh, he offered up prayers and supplication because he said he was crying out. And the vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard, but because of his godly fear, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things Mm -hmm. which he suffered. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. That's exactly why I said, honey, what, do you want to feel good or do you want his will? What you want? Right, right, Because right. really all Jesus wanted to do was feel better. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. he just wanted to feel better. Mm-hmm. Period. He just just wanted to feel better. How many times have you disobeyed God because what you were going through to die to yourself did not feel good? Exactly. <laughs> That's ninety percent of the battle most of the time, right? We we do e- even when when we disobey God, when we when we are out of sorts and out of pocket, um, you know those moments where you you want to turn up, you want to get high, you want to lay up, you want to you know all the things that are violations of our our body and our soul, right? Those things that make us feel good. <laughs> hey, Z. Yeah. Um, EK this morning is on. He got with me. I'm I'm with him on that feeling of burning and knowing that even though that person did you wrong and you we have to. We have to make it right. I'm also always thinking about Deuteronomy twenty nine, twenty nine that tells us that the secret thing. So all the stuff that we've gone through, all the things that um we have like impacting us now. Imagine if I was telling Armani just yesterday, I was like, God does not let us know what lies ahead because we would mess up trying to detour around it. Some of the stuff we have to go through so we can grow, and that grace will impact us to be able to go back and apologize to those people who we rather slap the piss out of, damn real. And so we have to because we have to be obedient so that the curses and blessings, I'm so glad you broke it down the way that you did because you're right. We always talk about blessed in the city, blessed in the fields, blessed when we come and we go. But really, what does that really mean? So you just really opened up a whole nother layer for me. So I know even though I feel like I miss forgiveness, and I'm not, there's a couple of people that I have to, even though they dog me, I've got to do what uh, my bro EK said, and i got to go fix it. Because they even about me, is about God and who I say I believe in. So I thank you for your share. I love you to life. You are amazing. Don't don't beat me up for saying you're amazing on a call, but you really are. I was finna say, honey, I ain't that amazing now. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> hey, Dion, Michelle, did you hey. just walk in the room like Major Payne and tap a few of us on the forehead, though, your whole finger? That part right there, just just understanding how obedience works and my experience from things when he tells us to do something we know we ain't did nothing wrong, it even releases like taking a whole boulder off your chest in order for you to be able to breathe. Like you said, just people in general. I remember one time he told me to forgive somebody that had me whole, just put me on a platform just to do me wrong. And I was like, wait, what? I said, okay, Lord, if you say so, I ain't going to see her. No way. I'm saying that on the back of my mind. Same day, an hour later, put me right in her way. So it is better, better to obey. And he will so absolutely do better. it. He will do it and make you shame. <laughs> He'll be like, uh-huh. and do it without regret, though. And do it without regret. 
once that thing, he really shows you, if you be obedient and do that thing, once it's over and done with, you'd be like, Lord, I shouldn't have doubted you. I shouldn't have even flinched my eyebrows just to say, huh? But to God be the glory. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate it. It, it didn't... It didn't, and it doesn't always feel good. Because, like I said, it's not like I get everything perfect. That's that's not, <laughs> yeah, that's that's not what happens. That's not the truth. Um, but but what I do recognize is that we have another day, for real. Even again, if if you just take some time this evening when you get off work or on your ride, turn off the radio. And and do a whole bunch of being quiet. And literally, just start, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. Just start by telling God how great he is. That's it. Telling him how wonderful he is. Telling him how much you appreciate um, the fact that you have an opportunity to get this thing called life. Just telling God how you, you appreciate that he hasn't killed you because he could have. He could have. He could have. He, he could have took us out of here. Listen, people are leaving here left and right. Don't let it be you that the only reason that you ended up having to exit is because okay, well she just ain't never going. Well then let me let me save her for myself then. Let me snatch her up out of here. I'm not. No, I want to be empty. Thanks. That's my plan. Is to be completely empty. Somebody was about to say something. Go ahead. Hi, Pastor Dion. You have such a good ear. I just said D, and then I just went back quiet, and you still heard me. Um, this is Prosperous Pam. I am still on the conversation that you guys, just, you and Christina Joy, uh, Christina Joy just mentioned about um, God's will for Jesus, for him to take that cup. I mean, I, that is just so powerful to me because, Sometimes we think it like, and I, I think Lisa said it too, we're walking in his will and we think it's going to always feel good. And it's not, it's just really trusting him of what it is he's got, what he has. And it's his will, not my will, not your will, Lord, not my will. So I just, um, I just thought that was so powerful just that even um, it was his will for Jesus to take that cup. Um, and Jesus did just want to feel better. You know, he was going through that anguish and knowing everything he was going to have to deal with. Lord, if it's, and it's, I mean, I just think it's so powerful, and it was a, a message to me because sometimes I, I'm just like naturally someone who is like to make things happen, and when things aren't happening, like this pandemic is just driving me nuts. Like I can't really do what I want to be, you know. I'm just, but I'm trusting Him and doing His will. Um, I can't just go out and just be all kind of, you know, do anything I want to right now, but I'm um, just trusting Him. Um, I, I know I'm just rambling, but I just thank you for the, the words this morning and the, and the um, conversation. God bless everybody. Amen. Amen. You, weren't, you weren't rambling. You were fine. Amen. I, we, we just said amen. Go ahead. Amen. Anybody else have anything? Just want to add on to it. Did the Christ, he was obedient unto death. And when we die to ourselves, thank you, Jesus, the resurrection of, um, of Christ lives within us to live through us. And, and, yeah, you know, it's about allowing his journey to live through us and that we take that journey with him. What the scripture says, if we're going to reign with him, we must learn to suffer with him. And young yeah. lady mentioned, mentioned earlier about going through things and doing things right. When we, the scripture teaches us that Paul had faced many adversities. And I don't, sometimes I don't think that we get it that what part of this journey do we not understand and who is the forerunner of all of it and that we are honored and privileged to experience the things that Christ not only came to live and die and to give us, but to go through it as he went through it. And it's just, you know, I love the Lord so much. I'm I'm done. I just started listening to people and it's just like Jesus, you know. 
is to, as you said, for real, for real, that's one of my favorite sayings, for real, for real, um, that we really understand this hour and what God is calling us to, um, to be in this earth realm, you know? And it's just an honor to represent him, to be his ambassador, to just to be so with him like Enoch, you know, that that how Enoch walked with God, you know. But anyway, praise the Lord, saints. The word is good, Pastor Dion. The word is good. Amen. Amen. Blessings and thank you for sharing. Good morning. Um, we can barely hear you. You got to readjust your mouth. Uh, not yet. Try again. Okay. Let me get rid of the speaker thing. Okay, what about now? That's perfect. I was just thinking um, about my... Uh, when I was thinking up about, about Jeremiah, uh, when he talk about it in Jeremiah, what God talk about, I know the plans I have for you. Well, before I understood that, I was with my own plans. I fought more for my plans for me than I was thinking about what he was for me because I really just didn't understand that at that time. And then I could sing then, still fighting for my plans, trying to do what I want to do. I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the fields because I had a job, was paying the bills and this and that and the other. But after going through that process of God setting me on the backside of a mountain, so to speak, removing me away from all of the things and the stuff that I was doing. So I clearly understand when you say he moved you all the way to Georgia because I had to go all the way to Tennessee to understand some stuff. Um, so when then I can sing with conviction when I got back, when went through the process. I'm really blessed in the city, blessed in the field when I come and go because I understand the plans that he has for me now and, and not what I was fighting for my plans for myself. The process is so important. You have to go through that to get to understand how to be humble, how to be anything for the plan of God, because that process is for you. He already knows. And so I just really yeah. appreciate this morning what your declaration. I really appreciate it. You know, even thinking of even the Lord saying, if, this, if it's possible, can I just pass this cup? But not my will, but your will. So I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Listen, I understand that having, see, he, he put me someplace I couldn't just run home. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, could, I couldn't just slide, you know, couldn't just jump in the car and be like, honey, I'm going to go see my mama. Mm-mm. He was like, no, 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 boo. He said, I need you to become everything that I need you to be here that you were intended to be there so that when I send you back and, and listen, I, I the cold part is I got so comfortable. See, I didn't have to be nothing in Georgia. I didn't have to. I didn't have to be the the savior of the world, child. I didn't have to mm-hmm. come to everybody's rescue. I didn't have to have mm-hmm. all the answers. I didn't have to be the big sister. I didn't have to be a whole bunch of stuff. It seemed like a um, whole weight came off. Of it was. You. Listen, I'm I'm telling <laughs> you, I, I got there and I remember I was walking up to the Piggly Wiggly, child. I went to the Piggly Wiggly on purpose. And I was in the parking lot of the Piggly Wiggly dancing, literally dancing, saying, I don't have to be anything for anybody but Abba. It was one of the freest places I had ever experienced. And even I didn't have to be uh, everybody's solution to everything. I didn't have to be everybody's uh, way maker. And, and I didn't have to be the God that I had made myself in so many lives, trying to rescue the world, being an empath and, and being a, a codependent, <laughs> right? Codependent, thinking I'm doing something. You big dummy. You about to kill yourself. Trying to solve everybody else's problems, you fool. (laughs) Sit your booty down. (laughs) I am like, oh my God, drowning in your own darkness. And uh, oh my God, light place. So you keep so we can actually show you you. Oh, that is so powerful. I understand it because I went all the way to Memphis, Tennessee, all the way. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. And then, then when I came back, when I got back home. I, I mean, I was, and now mind you, he made me drive 3,000 miles by me and my son. 
me and my child in this U-Haul, pulling this car, honey, a U-Haul full of books, electronics, and clothes. I left everything else in Georgia, just like I had done in California. And I, I remember saying to myself, Lord, what is this? I had to drive through snow and rain. I was terrified because the truck was humongous. Oh, my goodness. And then I got home, and all hell broke loose. And I mean all hell. I was like, oh, no, I had to have made a mistake. Maybe I should just go back. I just can't be right. Oh, girl, you're singing my song and telling my story, so I'm just grateful this morning. (laughs) This cannot be right. (laughs) <laughs> this, this 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 can't be right. This this gotta be wrong, honey. Cause my grandma dying, my mama is uh not my friend. We was bickering and arguing every fifteen. What is this? Jesus, what is this? And I don't want none. That's all. Never mind. Just let me go back to my little regular basic. My little life was so basic in Atlanta. I went to work, got off, and came home. That's it. And went to church. Yeah. And, and I get it. Church, church. That's all I did. That's all I did. But to God be the glory, today I get it. Yeah. Today I understand. Yeah. Right? The there, there wouldn't be. And then the, the, listen, that's where he told me process in 2002. Yeah. Now, it's 2022, 20 years ago, when the when Pastor Steve Thorner was still living, um, I remember sharing with him process, preparation, position, promise. I am just 20 years later. I need y'all to hear me. 20 years later, I am just walking into promise. Girl, come on here. The process is, is, is designed to go through. It, right. it wouldn't be a process if you couldn't didn't go through it. So I get it. Thank you so much. God bless you today. It's been a blessing for me. Thank you for your share. God bless you. Anybody else? Pastor Dion, you just reminded me of something that was really powerful, too, is that um, it's interesting because that's how I felt when I moved to San Jose, just from Richmond when I was 18. It was just nice to be somewhere where I felt like um, I didn't have anything to prove. And I'm God just told me right now that <laughs> that's nothing but your pride. Like, why is it that I have to go somewhere else to feel like, you know, how you were talking about going to the Piggly Wiggly and just feeling like you didn't have to do. And it just, um, he was speaking to me too. And um, I just, I'm, I'm so glad for this, your message today, because you were even saying about going and asking God, you know, clean out the areas that I don't even know that I have in me. You know, there's, if there's the pride that I didn't even realize, you know, until just hearing what you were talking about right now. So there's just so much, and I just thank God for this call, and I'm just thankful for him just continuing to just um, purify my heart, purify my heart. So just thank you again. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Good morning. This is Alex. Um, I, I commend you. Um, you have it right. Sometimes we try to do things, go our way, don't look right. This is going the wrong way, but it really is. We got to trust the process. Trust the process that God has because he, he has the process for us for a reason because he knows what he's doing. We don't know what we're doing. So that's why we need a guide. That's why we need the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instructions for leaving this earth because we don't know what we're doing. We need a guide. We need instructions. We need that kind of venue so that it keeps us accountable, keeps us <clears throat> humble, and keeps us directed and keeps us connected because without it, we are a mess. Mm-hmm. Facts. Absolutely. Hey, Amen. Good morning. This is Toyer. Um, I want to share something um, about obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God had me go to this hospital, pay for this little girl. She had got ran over by a car. And um, he kept telling me he was going to save her, go pray for her. He's going to save her. And I, and I trust God, so I believe that. The moment I left the hospital, 
the little girl passed away. So I kind of got angry at God. I was like, why did you have me go there? You said you was going to save her. And he said I did. I didn't say I was going to save her here on earth. I didn't say I was going to keep her in this ratchet world. I didn't say I was going to let her be tortured by this family of non-believers. I went to the hospital and their entire family, nobody was praying. The entire family was in the in the family room watching the 49ers game, cheering on the 49ers game while this little girl is in the room on life support. As me and my pastor were praying, the nurses came in the hallway and told us we couldn't pray there, told us to get out the hospital. We couldn't stand in the hallway and pray. And and I didn't I, I, I started to change my prayers at that moment because I had to apologize and thank God because he said, you were obedient. You, your obedience saved her life, took her from the other way because nobody was praying for her. Nobody was going to help deliver her soul to me. So I had to send you there because you're obedient for the sacrifice. And I thank God for that. Just yesterday, a lady that I call my auntie passed away. And she had a very hard life. She was in the streets on drugs for, I'm I'm 46, so as long as I've known her. And I'm sure she knew me before I was born. And I was praying for her, and, and, and the enemy tried to remind me of the little girl. Like, you know, you know she's not going to live. He tried to get in my head. You know she's not going to live. And God reminded me, obedience is better than a sacrifice. Once again, I saved her. Because now for a year, this lady that been on drugs, been in darkness, been prostituting, been in the world, like heavy in the world, she started coming to give her life to God. She started bringing people out of darkness into the kingdom to handle business. So I, 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 I thank God right now. I'm rejoicing in him. I thank him for allowing me to see his miracle signs and wonders. I thank him for allowing me to see him pull this woman out of darkness and save her from this ratchet world. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen? Very good. Very good. Very good. Keep going. That's all I got. Amen. 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 Anybody else have anything? I do. Hey, D. Um, So, family, I just want to put this out there. It's not just me. I'm sure um, somebody else's spirit is rattling. Um, Dion has come in labor for three days straight, three whole days. Um, oh, has she put aside stuff and, you know, just came and ministered to us. So, Let's take today and pour into her life. Let's bless her. She don't ask for nothing. And I know she's probably over here like, girl, cut it out. But you already to God know. be the glory. <laughs> to God be the glory that we have um, such a, a jewel that will come and pour out and encourage us and, and does it with radical obedience. Um, so you we know her uh, catch up. If you don't, it's dollar sign, the radical midwife. Let's bless her because she always blesses us and she does it, you know, without just flinching or anything because she does it because she loves the Lord and she wants us all to be where she's at. So let's bless her today. So I wouldn't tell y'all yep. nothing that to do that I wouldn't do. So let's bless her and, and make her day great. I appreciate Amen. it. That that was not at all the expectation. I I do it because I can't I can't breathe without it. It is my greatest reward when somebody who hears something that God has spoken through me, for real, when your life starts to change and we start to see the manifestation of the power of God in your life and people starting to come to Christ as a result of you having a turn in your heart, that blesses my life. You guys don't understand when, when the light bulb goes on in your head, when the light bulb goes on and you get it. Um those are the moments where in one area of your life you may have been walking in a place of disobedience, but something happens because you heard, because you understood, because you now know that your life is valuable and he loved you unto death. 
He loved you enough to die for you and to give his life so that you would have action at not just living for him, but living for him in such a way that it impacts the world, that when you walk into rooms and atmospheres, life begins to shift for others. That's why I do it. I, I don't do it for a dollar. I've been doing this for eight years, and they ain't never really asked for you to give me nothing ever. That's not, that's not what I'm called to. I do this for free all day, every day. It's, it's, it's what I live for. Um, and so I appreciate when somebody sews anything at five dollars, two dollars, three dollars, whatever. But just know this that's that's this is not a hustle for me. Um this this is uh what I'm called to. I can't sleep at night because I carry y'all. I can't uh, uh spend many nights getting up at two and three o'clock in the morning praying for whoever God puts on my heart to pray for, answering calls and going go do this and do that. And I do it all again and I don't care what it costs me. This freedom costed me everything, right? Period. Is the yeah. free? It, it cost me yeah. everything. Uh huh. Go ahead. Hello. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna cry because you know I'm a cry baby. But I'm gonna say this: you're such a blessing. What everyone does with decorations and everybody in the back office and people, the schedulers and everybody. Um, you know, we're all blessed by you guys. But I want to say this. You are definitely chosen because I know, I don't know about everybody else, but I know I can do this. <laughs> I probably would have quit a long time ago. But I wanted to also say that I remember back, and I'm not going to go through the whole story, but back when I went to court, I have about 500, maybe more relatives in all of the Bay Area. And you were the only person that came to court with me. It was a December 19th can't think of the year, a few years ago, about three or four years ago. The only person that sat with me in court when a judge had to, you know, give his ruling, the only person, I am forever grateful to you. My life, my freedom was on the line. And you sat right there with me in court, you and my probation officer. And so, child, you ain't got to ask for nothing. You are a true blessing. There's nowhere in the world that we can get on a call like this and get the real deal, holy feel. You don't mind sharing none of your business. And again, I always say this, your life and experiences help us. You have not just blessed me, but you've blessed my entire family. When I'm up in the morning, I'll be like, well, who, are, who are you talking to? It's 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm on a prayer line. He roll over and go back to sleep. <laughs> he ain't even tripping because he already know. You know, you know, you know, Dion. And he know you have blessed this family with your prayers, you know, and your presence, your um, your testimonies, everything. You have blessed my family. I am forever grateful. But you probably ain't got to ask me for nothing. I already know. I already know what to do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, we all go to concerts and, and, and go shopping and all that stuff and do things for people that would never even think about us twice. But you absolutely love us from the heart. So I am forever grateful to you. Thank mm-hmm. you for being there with me when I thought I was, uh, look, I'm going to stop right there. You already know. I was on my way. Mm-hmm. And walked out that court with no restitution. Mhm. Amen. Amen. God be praised. Yes. Hey. Hey, sir. Could you hear me? I can. Okay. Good. Oh, glory. You know what? I love you so much. One thing I can say this um, morning: you definitely understood the assignment. Um, far as even letting us know about obedience and also. Let us know, don't worry about, you know, know that you got this opportunity today. You know what I'm saying? To get in his presence and, or whatnot. That's the whole thing. I just wanted to say that because you understood this. I mean, of course, I love pointing it to good ground. And for you, for me, you are good ground. You know what I'm saying? I love you. Y'all know I want to climb underneath my bed right now, right? <laughs> I love y'all. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Y'all making me good and uncomfortable. Amen. (laughs) 
Amen. Well, I'm getting ready to make you a little bit more uncomfortable. This is persistent. <laughs> I've been trying. To, <laughs> I've been trying to be quiet. I'm just be trying to be still. But Dion, you know, um, this is a girl who did, who knew nothing but church, and um, since I've been on this line, there's been so much growth inside of me. But I just love your your walk. I love your ministry. I love the women on this line. You know, it's like the other week or two, I said, God, I think I met my tribe. I think I mm-hmm. finally met. I, I, and I've never been able to say that. Mm-hmm. I never really wanted to say that because mm-hmm. I always got disappointed when I thought it. Mm-hmm. So I just stayed away from it, you know. But today's message for me brought up so much, you know, so much. Um, so many people, I got to go back and I, I know it's going to be a lot <laughs> that I have mm-hmm. to do what he told me to do when I didn't think it was him. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. there's no way you would tell me, you know what they did to me. <laughs> there's mm-hmm. no way you would tell me. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> So I just and then and then the young the young lady or the the woman that just spoke about you being there, and she didn't get the sentence in court. She just you know solidified and just said it all enough that you, that you were the only one, and how much she appreciated it was so sincere. Everything that everyone said when uh, Mr. Dawson said what he said about how he's not got to go and get, and Pam, and everybody. You know, it's just been, it's been so rich this morning. I so appreciate you. And you guys, pray for me. My finances have not been right, but God has still kept me. But I just had to trust and believe. And that's one of the hardest areas that you get to trust in. Because you're like, God, you know I need it. Everybody needs it. You know what I'm saying? So, but, you know, maybe I'm not in the right place. No, it, look, who you, can I tell you what the Lord told me about my finances? And, I, and I'll tell you guys a little, a little bit later what, what I did and why, why I did it. Um, but he told me to radically give. Um, and, and I've been doing that, but even, even the more. Mm-hmm. My, my prayer is that I can live off of 20 and so 80. That's, that's my ultimate prayer in life, is that I make enough money to live off of 20 and give 80. That's that's my and and as weird as that may sound, um there there is a blessing now keeping in mind that money was my god. Period. Mm-hmm. Period dot dot. Money was my god straight up. Right? You got to get to a place where you understand that he is the source. Period. That if I if I look at my life and and I'll, I'll say this to you guys because I, I know you understand the last five years of my life, everything that I've needed, He's had to provide. I didn't tried and tried and tried until finally I stopped trying to get a job. I mean, I can't get hired at Walmart. And I didn't listen. I need y'all to hear me. With the overhead that I have, the fact that my heater is running, my lights are on, I'm on this cell phone, my car outside is paid for, I got insurance on the car, I got insurance on the immature. Listen, when I think about how God has kept me, when he tells me to give, sometimes every single cent that I have, I promise you, the day I give it, Everything I've given, every single time he gives me back. This ain't no get-rich-quick scheme. It's not. And sometimes I don't have what I want to have, but every single need. It's like the woman with the oil and the meal. I never run out. I never run out. And just here recently, because of the seeds that I sowed at the, my first fruits, we didn't talk about first fruits on Declare Victory because I don't ever want anyone to think that we try around here trying to hustle. That's not what this is, right? Again, I said, I'll do what I do for nothing. I don't care. If you get free, 
If you start to walk in your victory, if you start to see the manifestation of who God is in your life, I'm, I'm paid in full because it means that I'm storing up things in heaven. But if you want to, to see something different happen in your finances, give from a, a place that makes you uncomfortable. I dare you. That's all I'm going to tell you. And I, I didn't tell you to give it here. Give it where he tells you to give it. And listen, and he'll tell you where to give it. You give in a place that you know is good ground. You give in a place that you know is productive. You give in a place that you know somebody else is going to benefit. And watch what God does. That's all I can tell you about that. Hey Amen. Give with obedience and watch him work. I'm a, I'm a witness of that, uh, Sister Dion. I kid you not. Out of ordinary, I, I – I blessed a homeless person without even thinking about it. I just went and did it. Didn't ask questions. Didn't do nothing. Gave people money. Didn't ask questions. Didn't didn't, didn't think about it. It just when we be obedient, he turns it back. You know, you're absolutely right. I've got money from patients, family. I work in a hospital. I refused it. Still want to give it to me. I said, I'm doing <laughs> for that. I've already been paid for. You understand? God has paid me already. Praise mm-hmm. God. It's, it's not about the finance because he owned everything anyway. You know, he does. Mm-hmm. And I, mm-hmm. I, I, I like what you're saying, sister, and I'm going to be quiet because I think I found my twin over here. Praise God. Because <laughs> I love to give with my heart. I love to see people smile. I, I told my pastor that I said, maybe I'm supposed to be up there. Uh, I like to pour at you all the time. So maybe I need, I need to be a, a, a a person that that that, that speaks or something. I, I don't know, but for some reason, I make people light shine. But praise God. <laughs> I'm a living witness. <laughs> Come on, Mother Walker. <laughs> Did you like that vibrato? <laughs> your nephew, like your it? nephew, say, Auntie Tan, stop screaming. <laughs> Tell him I said shut up. He can't tell me what to hear all, the, all these voices and he'd heard you bust out singing and knew it was you. <laughs> <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Priscilla, I have paid people's rent and God turned around and paid my, through somebody else, paid mm-hmm. my mortgage for almost a year. I have mm-hmm. given cars, plural, <laughs> cars, plural, gave them away. God has blessed me in return with cars. I have, um, (laughs) this is funny. So when we lost so much, um, Carl and I, we lost so much. Um, At one point we had to go on, uh, we had to get on um, public aid. We had to get on EBT and Medi-Cal. Ooh, I was ashamed. (laughs) And I told her, honey, shut up and go get them full stamps. Quit tripping. I, I, I was so glad it was a card and not actual. <laughs> the food stamps, she would have had 18 heart attacks, child, with them brown, green, and Listen, orange food stamps. Whatever color they was. Long time ago when I was a kid, I was I had them, but I didn't want So I ain't know. Well, anyway. And I would go I would go <laughs> to the store and would go to the store out the way so where I knew nobody knew me, and I would, Listen. I would go buy groceries. But I want to tell you that. I still get um, food stamps, and I'm not ashamed of it. Um, And let me tell you why I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed because for years I worked, and my taxes uh, invested into that system. Now I don't, I I don't need them anymore. And I called, I reported to the people that my income changed. (laughs) They told me, listen to this. They told me. We can't stop your aid because of COVID. Huh? <laughs> we can't stop it because of COVID. Now, it's nice to get them. I, I have no place. I will go to Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, and wherever else. Costco. The car is. <laughs> Listen, Sam's Club, Walmart, I'll go wherever. E, it say EBT? Okay, all right, here I come. Eat better today. Eat, that's what, that's what I learned. My nephew said, we eat better today. I was like, oh, okay. So let me t- like, listen. I could laugh. I, I could not laugh before because I was sh- cry, right? Let me let me tell you this. They keep every month. They keep telling me, okay, we're gonna cut you off. I am pleasantly surprised 
for well over six months now, I am pleasantly surprised that that same – actually, I got a raise. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I telling you this? I wish I wouldn't have opened my mouth. I promise I wouldn't, I wouldn't have. But the reason that I'm saying this is because I have probably given thousands of dollars away in food or groceries. And so we cannot beat God giving. It doesn't have to look the way that we want to, but God always rewards us. And the way that God generally rewards us is through other people. So when people turn around and want to bless you, when you deny them, you deny them the blessing because God is the one who put it on their heart to be a blessing to you. And so we deny them the opportunity to be blessed. It's just something to realize. It's so, it's so funny that I run into so many people that used to be, I used to be like, oh, no, 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 I'm the one that helps. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, God has a way of rewarding us. Here's the last thing that I want to say. Um, I hear people struggling on the call with how do you sit and listen? I hear people on the call that are struggling with, but how do I forgive? I want to give you two things. <laughs> one answer for both. You decide. You decide. You, you decide. Wait a minute. Whoever that is, somebody needs to mute. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you number one, you decide. You, 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 it, um, this journey requires action. We don't get spoon fed all the time. It requires that we participate. Even if you were spoon fed, you would have to take action and swallow. Would you agree? Don't take your phone off mute. Right? It makes sense. You you have to you have to you have to even if you p p put it in your mouth, you got to chew it unless it's a soup that you, and then you got to swallow it. So some kind of way you have to participate. And so um with the listening, I still struggle with that. I do. Because my mind, not I don't. It's not that I don't have the. My mind is constantly going. I'm constantly thinking about this or that. And so I make an appointment to sit down Wednesday, today, sir. Yesterday I made an appointment. Mm -hmm. uh, today I'm going to sit down and I'm going to be quiet. And so even though I make that decision, the thoughts will still try to come, and I might get diverted, and the Holy Spirit will say, "Shh," and I go, "Oh, okay, okay," and I and I mm -hmm. keep doing it. And as long as I keep doing it, I'll perfect. It. That's the listening. As far as the obedience, you gotta make it. You just make a decision. Either, either yeah. I will or I won't. And don't be concerned about the what ifs. What will people think? What will people say? Um, what will be the outcome? Even the obedience and asking somebody to forgive you. I was literally in a situation this week where I knew that the person had the potential to cuss me out. But I made a decision that I was still going to ask for their forgiveness. And I tell you, I fell on my sword, proverbial sword. I fell on the sword. And I began to tell them how much I value them and that I accept full responsibility for what I said. Please charge it to my head and not my heart. I'm, I, I'm rather direct. And everybody can't take that. Um, and I try to work on that. But at some times, especially when I have on my admin hat, I don't have time to cradle people. I have, a, I have some things, and so everybody can't take that. Anyway, long story short, I literally felt the presence of God as I asked this person to please forgive me, and I saw tears well up in their eyes, mm -hmm. right? So we never know. The forgiveness is not so much about them, and, what, and that some people may reject um, your request to forgive them. That has nothing to do with you and your journey and the fact that you are obedient. So I just, I just want to encourage you to make a decision and then stick to it, and you'll perfect it as you go along. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good, very good. That's good stuff, good stuff. Anybody else before we go? And just FYI, if you are interested, um, today, I'll post it on the Declare Victory fan page. If you've not done so, go and like it. Let's. Um, I want to start building that that segment of things, but there will be a T-shirt available um, that just has the Radical Obedience logo on it. Um, I believe that this this share, this season of sharing, is not just a little thing. I believe it's something that's going 
to um, revolutionize your life. It's going to break some religion off of you. It's going to break some tradition off of you. It's going to move you into a place of freedom that perhaps you did not even know existed. Uh, if you give it permission to, it's, it's one of those times and seasons, y'all. And I'm excited. Um, I'm excited about what it is yielding. Um, I'm excited about the fact that that the Lord put me in a position to have to share three days in a row. That was rude, Jesus, because you know I don't sleep when I got to teach. <laughs> I'll be having a hard way to go, but I thank God for the process, as he even takes me into places of deeper obedience. God is, is extremely faithful. That's all I got. Anybody else before we go? It's 801. Well, God be praised. Um, oh, go ahead. Wait, I can't, I can't hear you, you muffled. And you mentioned your mom was in Sacramento. Can you please tell the beautiful lady to come to the food truck on Sunday and get her some good oh, food? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, I'm, I'm going to take her address. Please, yes, because I know she okay. she enjoyed that food the last time she was at my house. So Sunday, come on down. Okay, I'll absolutely <laughs> okay. tell her. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Thank you. Amen. Amen, guys. Well, I pray that something that was said today will provoke you to go and to grow in love, to be the Jesus that somebody needs to see, and to have great expectations in this season that God is going to do something supernatural in your life and the lives of those that you are connected to for his glory, for his victory in your life. I'm excited, excited, excited. The more you obey, uh, the more your ground produces. Uh, it's not my opinion. It is the word of God and my experience. I love y'all to life, uh, and I will hear you all uh, tomorrow. Tonight is Women Walk It Out call. For those of you that are still trying to figure it out, I need a, a closer, more intimate group of folks where it's uh, really, really relational. I'd encourage you to join Sister Lisa, uh, Sister Pam, and so many additional uh, women that are growing and thriving on that call. That call is tonight at Six o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, Pam, Lisa, somebody. Six o'clock. All Thursday right. At cool. six. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Well, I love you. Talk to you later. Have a good day. Have a love good day. You. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Have a great day. Hey, you guys. Bye -bye. Love you. God bless everyone. Have a great day.